to tell you a story. Peter is our new follow-up coordinator. He said he got a call, got a phone call on his cell phone, which we broadcast on our channel. And it was from a man, we'll call him Muhammad. And Muhammad said, I need to meet with you. Now, normally our guys would say, not a good idea. Let's talk first on the phone. But he felt the Lord was saying, go meet this guy. Who turned out to be what is called a prince of ISIS. Someone that other ISIS members swear allegiance to that they will die for. The prince was a religious person in ISIS, and they considered him like a leader who teaches the Quran. He taught people how to memorize the Quran and urged them to jihad. I grew up under radicalism. I was raised to take back Islam to the era of Muhammad, the era of power and conquests. We began to form groups to defend the country and Islam. One day, somebody asked me why I am a Muslim. I had no answer. I began to search in Quran, Hadith, and Sunnah. I wanted to find proof and evidence that Allah exists and Islam is right. I found nothing. The prince heard that I evangelized to Muslims. He got my number and called saying that he wanted to meet and talk. I had a strange feeling that he was from ISIS and that he might try to kill me. But I had a peace inside that the Lord would protect me as he had a reason behind this encounter. So I set up an appointment knowing that he could try to kill me. When I went to Peter, I was scared, but I wanted to search for the truth. So he went and he met with Muhammad and he said, the Lord spoke to him in that moment. He said, be bold with him. I said to him directly, our God is not yours. When I listened to Peter, I felt his words were arrogant. His words had awakened Muhammad, the radical one. Because of my anger, for a moment, I forgot why I came to Peter. I suddenly had one thought. How should I kill him? He boldly proclaimed the gospel to this man, this bearded man. He started crying while I was telling him these words. What made me cry? I don't know. While he was crying, I put my hand on his shoulder and started to pray. He then got up and left me. I felt he was not stable. They met. They went their separate ways. He called again. The man came back very shaken. I had a dream. Peter came to me and gave me a white envelope dripping with blood. The blood had a good fragrance like musk or perfume. When I saw the blood, I was scared. Peter said to me, don't be afraid. Then I woke up. Later, Peter told me, without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sins. The prince asked, what should I do to ask forgiveness? I said, the Lord gave it to you for free. You just need to accept it. And gradually, I began to disciple him. So they came together and Muhammad said, Peter, I have a confession. I have to tell you that the first time I was going to meet with you, I intended to kill you. And I'm sorry. And he fell on his face and he repented. I began to visit Peter regularly and I saw love that didn't exist in Islam. He started walking with the Lord right away. He shaved his beard. He changed his whole life. Then he asked to be baptized. Once I got out of the water, I felt a victory and a joy I could not describe. He is conducting a Bible study for three Syrian people in his area. The true book, in my opinion, is the Bible. I found the truth in Jesus Christ. And because I have surrendered my life to the Lord, I am certain He will never forsake me. <laughs>